Okay, guys, so there's, it's been a very long week for Diddy. I feel like every single day this week, we've been having something happen that's almost like out of a movie with him. Um, and yesterday, uh, there was a report that wrote via People magazine um, that Diddy would actually be placed on Suicide Watch or has been placed on Suicide Watch. Uh, you guys know that we reported that he was at MDC in Brooklyn. Um, yeah. And basically what that means is that um, there will be extra, normally, normally, because there's no details in the story, just said suicide watch. But normally this means that there's extra guards who will make uh, like very protective rounds. So they're checking in on him way more than they are any other um, inmates who are not on the suicide watch. Um, they're mm -hmm. keeping logs of how he is when they check on him. Um, and, and normally this is triggered by, you know, I don't like a conversation, thoughts, or this any inkling that the jail has that because of the new, life transition or something that happened while in custody, um, this person may harm themselves. Now, I reached out um, to a source trying to figure out, because there are sometimes, too, because of high-profile cases and who the people are, instances where they'll just kind of automatically put you on suicide watch because they want to just pay extra attention to you and because they know that your life transition is about to be really tough for the time that you're at their jail, uh, which is, you know, what's happening to Diddy. Like, he was literally in the man mansion, like, what, two week a week ago? And now he's um, in jail. And, and the source told me that this is basically protocol for the jail. However, uh, people who originally reported the story say, um, although the, although this is supervised, supervisory precautions taken for suicide suicidal inmates that require frequent observation. Um, this came about because Holmes is in shock and his mental state is unclear. So I'm not really sure right now mentally where did he is, but suicide watch is, is it's kind of alarming when you, you know, just hear that and hear his, um, you know, name intertwined and things. And there was also a report yesterday about uh, Kim Porter and uh, the member they had been saying for a while that she was supposed to be doing this book. Um, that was mm -hmm. supposed to detail different parts of their life. So Extra did a story. Um, and apparently Kim, who we know shared three children uh, with Diddy and passed away in 2018 at uh, 47, um, she had these like diary entries and they were supposed to be like really shocking. Um, and uh, according to the story, and allegedly Diddy in, in these diary entries and what was going to be eventually moved into some sort of written something. Um, there were claims that Diddy not only participated in threesomes and orgies with both men and women, all of this is alleged, um, but there were also like a vault of recordings with the young male artists. Um, and she also talked about in these diary entries that again, people are saying we're supposed to be a book, but I know some people have come out and uh, debunked that, um, that he would get violent sometimes as well too. And we've heard stories, there have been, um, you know, in, in some of the documents, uh, for instance, with Dawn Richard, Dawn Richard said that she remembered a time um, that, uh, Kim came out of a studio that she was walking into and she visibly had marks on her face and she was crying. Um, there was a security guard and, and there was conversation in Cassie's um, documents where she detailed times of seeing different things with Kim as well too. So I don't know, Envy. At this point, I, I'm kind of feeling like, man, this is... Yeah, I, it's, I, it's, it's, it's a lot. lot. Out. But I, I will say this, uh, I, and this is going to sound crazy, but I hope the feds do uh, pinpoint some of the people that seen this and never reported it, whether yeah. it was, uh, they call them enablers or, or or the security at the time. But if people actually seen what he was doing, if they seen him physically harming women, if they seen him drugging people, we'll also allege if they could, if they can prove that and they can improve those people who are around for that amount of time. Cause I mean, we're talking back to some of these people are saying like, you know, two thousands and something. So we're yeah. talking over 20 years and the fact yeah. that people knew this, I think they, they should be charged with something as well because that is foul because maybe some of these, these people would have been saved. Maybe Kim Porter would have been saved. You just never know, but it's just And I want to say, I want to say that um all of, all of what I reported about the diary entries, nothing I confirmed myself. These, these are, this is all alleged. So, right. you know, to keep that in mind, but yeah, I think that that's what's happening. I know that, there were also reports of a male sex worker who came um, to the government and said, hey, I want to have a conversation with you guys. And in the courtroom, um, the day before yesterday, when Diddy lost the second bail arraignment, um, the mm -hmm. judge and, and some of the prosecutors were having a conversation about the fact that more people had begun to come out to them and how they would, you know, because they're trying to figure out a speedy trial for him. His, his lawyer is pushing for the trial to happen soon. So he won't have to sit. So they're like, well, give us time because more people are reaching out to us. Um, but you know, I think the biggest thing with this, too, is seeing how the industry is reacting to it, because another big thing with this Diddy situation has been a lot of people saying, well, why didn't anybody else say anything? There's so many people around them. Everybody's at the party. Why yeah. is everybody so quiet? Right. 
So I, I want us to get into some of the reactions that have happened. Um, yesterday, Sean, you know, Sean was a part of Bad Boy. Sean is the one who went to jail after the whole shooting when J-Lo was in the club with Diddy and all yep. that stuff. He came out and spoke about, you know, what's happening with Diddy instead of Diddy ruined his life. Let's take a listen. When I was a, a 18 year old kid, you know, just wanting to do nothing other than make my mother proud and make Belize proud and take over the world. I was defending him and he turned around and called witnesses to testify against me. And he contributed. He pretty much sent me to prison. Yes, I forgave. I moved on. I went again to do a charity event for impoverished youth uh, in London. This was not someone uh, who I vacationed with and who he and I enjoyed this great intimate relationship. Uh, this is someone that destroyed my life. But do I take any joy or any satisfaction with what he is going through? Absolutely not. I mean, look. I'm not shy. I didn't sit in jail for all them years. I, you know what I mean? I know the story about, and for those of you who don't know, what Shine is referring to about putting him in jail, um, during the case back when the shooting happened at the club that J-Lo was present for, um, mm -hmm. all that, basically, Shine has always claimed that Diddy was the one who called certain witnesses and made them testify so that sure. Diddy would be cool to get yeah, off Diddy, and, Diddy's and Shine wouldn't. Called, yeah, Diddy's attorney called up witnesses that cleared uh, Puff, but pointed yeah. at Shine. And exactly. you know, if they if that's my artist, if that's my friend, I wouldn't bring up an artist that's going to clear me and point at you. I'm, I'm just not going to have that artist. And that was Shine's thing. Shine still says uh, he, he never fired that weapon. And I would just say the way that Shine put it, you can just tell Shine has grown a lot. I mean, the fact that he says he's he's forgiven Diddy, the man that put him in jail for so long, took a lot of his his life away. And it still say, look, that's not my guy. I don't get joy out of seeing another man uh, fall. I think that's amazing. So salute to Sean. But like Sean said, that's not but my don't guy. You, but don't that's you? I, I, when, but when I first heard it, though, I was like, this is kind of corny, though, because it's like, where was his energy the whole time for him? Because when I've heard him talk about it, he's never said things like destroyed my life. No, he made he, it he seem said, like, you know, things like before. it was horrible, but we moved on. Now it's given like, you no, know, he's yeah. a, like. He said it before, and what Sean said was like, no, we're not friends. Yes, me and Diddy have a relationship because I want to help the kids in Belize. Yes, I want to help and do these charity events, but we're not best friends. So don't ask me about him because we don't hang out on Thanksgiving. We don't go to each other's house on Christmas, nor have I been to one of his Sunday parties. I'm sure that's what Sean is saying. But <laughs> Sean, I think was I think he said it right. Like, Sean yeah, said, I don't we, even use baby oil. Yeah, yeah, I don't even use baby oil. I think Sean said it right, and I think a lot of people are going to be saying that. Well, Faison Love also had... Uh, a pretty interesting take on this Diddy situation. Let's take a listen to him. We all heard about Puffy. And I see a lot of people, yay, yay, yay. I'm confused. The Cassie thing, I understand. I think you should definitely lock this up. Put hands on the young lady. But I don't understand now that she, when has being nasty been a federal crime? And I'm glad they told me. I didn't know there was a limit on baby oil. You know, you get a massage or something or whatever. I, yeah, I don't know. And he had a white woman, Mae West. They couldn't stop this black man. So they gave him trafficking in the 1800s. If he didn't do that, he wouldn't have stopped. I thought I told you that we won't. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, he's leaning into kind of what Boosie was saying yesterday, where he's talking about, I don't understand how this is illegal for you to just be freaky. Yeah. And what people don't understand is parts to, to his indictment There's parts to, you know, his uh, being arrested. It's not just the fact that he's a freaky and kinky individual and he has a thousand <laughs> bottles of baby oil. I mean, that's his own kink and he's and he can have his own kink. It's the other reports where people have saying that he was forced, that he forced him to do things. He forced him to allegedly have sex. He forced him to allegedly uh, use drugs. That's that's what he's on trial against. But I would also tell the people like, you know, right now you're only hearing one side of this. So just take a step back and, and read the whole indictment, see everything that comes out and then make the judgment for yourself. Because right now we're all making judgment off of headlines, uh, uh, which I don't think is right. So read the indictment, read what the, the prosecutor is putting out, read what, what Diddy's lawyers have said and then make your own judgment. But this is going to be a long trial. This is going to be a long case. There's going to be a lot of witnesses. There's going to be a lot of footage. So but there's a long way to think about this. Mm, long. Pause, pause, pause. <laughs> all right. Well, that all right, was well, just uh, Next time, yeah, that's, that's the, let's wrap it up. All right. Well, that was just with the mess with Lauren LaRosa now. And when we come back, we got front page news with Morgan. So don't go anywhere. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.